In our previous video on metabolism, we introduced the idea of enzymes. And also, we talked about how enzymes involve this idea of the activation energy. Enzymes are necessary because they lower the activation energy of chemical reactions and thus cause those reactions to speed up. Now we're going to sort of look even deeper into enzymes in this next flowchart entitled Enzymes 2. So Enzymes, oops, Enzymes 2. And we're going to actually talk more so now about how they actually work, specifically focusing on their structure and the way that that structure sort of defines the function of an enzyme. So we'll entitle the first part of this flowchart how enzymes work, how ENZ work. Specifically, what we have to remember, and what some people often don't realize, that enzymes are actually proteins. Enzymes are proteins in every way, shape, and form. Um, specifically, they are globular proteins. That's the type of protein they are in terms of their shape. They're globular. They're usually uh, just a glob, basically. And what we mean by this is that they also then definitely have a tertiary or quaternary structure. Remember those terms. This is the cumulativeness, let's say, of biology in the sense that we have to remember that tertiary or quaternary structure is the advanced structure of protein from biological molecules lecture that helps us sort of define the function. It defines functionality, let's say. And that tertiary structure involves the interaction of R groups, if we don't uh, make sure we don't forget that, and that quaternary structure in, involved the reaction of multiple polypeptide chains, just as a refresher. So an enzyme can be either or, tertiary or quaternary. Um, what we also have to imagine is that within this structure, we usually see enzymes with specific areas that are called clefts. Um, we also see enzymes with uh, specific grooves. And we also see, basically, these are um, considered, let's say, indentations. All enzymes have these indentations. And why would they have these? What's the purpose of this? Well, this is going to be sort of the area at which we have an active site. This is a key idea of all enzymes. Let's star this because this is an important idea. The active site is going to be considered um, any region of a protein region of protein. And what protein are we talking about in this situation? A globular protein. Which globular protein? Enzymes, of course. So this is any region of a protein, um, an active site is, and any region of a protein that interacts with, and this is a new term, a substrate. So this whole idea of enzyme interacting with substrate goes along to our next point of the substrate itself. What is a substrate and why is it important when recognizing or learning about enzymes? Substrate can be defined as any substance acted upon. So any substance acted upon by who? Who do you think is going to act upon a substrate based on our definition of active set? Of course, a substrate is going to be active, uh, acted upon by an enzyme. So we'll write by enzyme. Specifically, in this situation, what we expect to see is that all enzymes, so enzymes, um, they all have this quality. They all have this ability um, to be substrate, we'll say subspecific. What I mean by this is that enzymes will always form what is known as, and this is a term you should know, the enzyme substrate complex. The enzyme substrate complex is going to provide us a very easy understanding of the idea of how an enzyme works because now we can apply the knowledge that we've established. The enzymes are substrate specific. If they're substrate specific, then we have to make sure that there's a specific substrate attached to that enzyme. We can look at an example like sucrase. If we remember, ACE was the ending of a term that caused or told us that we're going to be looking at an enzyme. So an enzyme that's specific to sucrose is going to be sucrase, and we'll write that down. Sucrase will only act on, guess what, sucrose. 
And let's remember, sucrose is what? Sucrose was a sugar, a sugar molecule, specifically a disaccharide that was glucose and fructose combined together. The end all be all point here is that an enzyme works through this manner. Enzyme combines with substrate because enzymes are substrate specific. A good example of that would be sucrase having its active site on sucrose, a part of the sucrose molecule. So that tells us how enzymes work. In addition to this, we have to understand one more concept, and this is an important idea in enzyme and metabolism studying. It's called the induced fit model. The induced fit model is what allows us to figure out how an enzyme is actually going to work, how we're going to see an enzyme combined with a substrate, and then the end-all be-all effects of that combination. What we notice is first you obviously have to have a substrate. And once you have a substrate, that substrate is going to combine with what? Of course it's going to combine with its specific enzyme. So we have substrate plus enzyme. Substrate plus enzyme will then give us exactly a shape change of some sort. That's shape change, and we'll write that down as, let's say, an enzymatic shape change. What I mean by this is that once you combine the enzyme, and specifically what part of the enzyme? The active site with the substrate, creating an enzyme-substrate complex, you're going to induce, there's the name right there, induced fit model, you're going to induce a shape change within the enzyme. Once you have done this, the sort of end result of this, the reason why we have a shape change is this. This shape change actually causes the active site, and remember, who has the active site? The enzyme. Remember, the enzyme has the active site that interacts with the substrate. That active site, unbelievably, this is really cool, that active site actually begins to fit more tightly with the substrate. Because what did we say? We said that an enzyme combines with substrate. But the biological success of an enzyme and a substrate involves this overall reaction to occur. We need that substrate to tightly bind with the enzyme. We can't have it just haphazardly bind. We can't have it bind weakly. We need a tight fit. We need an induced fit. That's why it's called the induced fit model. And so what do we do? We make sure that we have this shape change. So once we've had this tightly fit active site into the substrate, we're now going to be able to do our job as an enzyme. And our overall job of most enzymes, let's say, is to um, overall cause or causes enzymes cause the breaking of bonds. Once we cause the breaking of bonds, we have done our job as an enzyme. One side note I want to mention, and this is how we'll conclude this video, is that the induced fit model used to be thought of, and you might have learned this in, let's say, high school biology or AP biology, it used to be considered what we uh, so often refer to as lock and key. People used to think that the, let's say, the enzyme represented the key and the substrate represented the lock or vice versa, and it was a specific fit that had to happen. But what we've noticed through, let's say, modern biology is that it's a little more complicated than that. And that's what research often shows us, is that simple ideas like this often are much more complicated because of just the overall emergent nature of biology. There's that word again, emergence. So overall, we now understand how enzymes work. Enzymes are globular proteins. They can be tertiary or quaternary in their structure. They have an active site. That active site is there because it has to bind to a substrate. If it binds to a substrate, we create a enzyme-substrate complex. An example would be sucrase with sucrose. And this process undergoes or is done by the induced fit model, where we combine substrate enzyme. Enzyme changes shape. Why does it change shape? In order to create a more tight fit between the active site and the substrate and eventually cause the overall job, let's say, of the enzyme to work. And the job in this situation would be the breaking of bonds. In our next video, we'll look at why enzymes are very picky.